If you've been watching my channel for a while and know about my processing technique, you know I am a two camera kind of guy. I shoot a lot of mono because mono cameras are the best. That's where you'll get the best quantum efficiency, get the best low light sensitivity and the best overall quality on your image. But I love the natural color of space. Natural visual spectrum images of space are exactly how we would see them if our eyes weren't completely weak and useless. And seeing those natural reds and blues in space is just beautiful and I love it. So I've always shot with a one shot color camera. When my trusty QHY 12 CCD died, I was stuck without being able to shoot natural color. But I've got a new camera, which I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna quickly unbox it because unboxing is boring. So I'm just gonna show you the specs and do some quick bench tests and show you how to bench test your new camera when you get it. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. A quick shout out to the sponsor who is funding my alcoholism this week, which is High Point Scientific, an online American retailer who have a price match guarantee. So if you are getting into astronomy and you want to buy something like a new camera, uh, definitely check out High Point Scientific. So when the QHY died, uh, I was very disappointed because this camera has been great. It did have some issues with the drivers, uh, which I'm hoping this new one won't have. So what is it? It is a QHY. 24-7. Look at this cool packaging. It's got uh, some great graphics. This is what you get with a ZWO camera. QHY I see as the only real competitor in this space. They're both Chinese companies. They're both focusing on getting out new sensors as quickly as possible. It is sort of unusual that they've called their business QHY CD considering now there is a shift away from CCD. Look, I know gear reviews and unboxings are boring, so I'm gonna skip a lot of that boring stuff. Um, even though this is a camera that I am reviewing and testing, there are gonna be some tips throughout this video for things that you should know. And you should always do this with a new camera, whatever camera it is. Bench test it and work out what it can do first before you go and put on the telescope and waste the whole night in the cold because of driver issues and things you haven't worked out yet. All right, let's do it. Desiccant tube. Mm, clean sensor. This is the American plug, I'll need the Australian plug, but that's no big deal. Now the desiccant tube goes into the side here so that if you do have a problem with condensation on the camera or inside the camera because of the humidity levels or the temperature fluctuations in your observatory or your site, uh, you can use these to ensure that any condensation that happens inside will get sucked up by this. Now, super important to note, uh, what the camera may not come with, is the adapter and the right back focal distance that you need for your telescope. Now this camera is listed on the High Point Scientific website. In Australian dollars, that's about four million bucks. Uh, if you're shooting at the front with Hyperstar or Arasa, this is gonna be at the front of the optical train. Uh, and that means that it's going to potentially reduce the light gathering capability of the aperture. Um, and that's why there's been a trend to these small footprint cameras. But this sensor obviously has much more cooling and much more guts in it, uh, so it is gonna block more light than my QHY12 would have. However, fingers crossed it should still work. But really the main thing that matters with these cameras, uh, we're just interested in the sensor. It's the sensor that we want. Everything else is bells and whistles. So this sensor is a Sony IMX193 with a massive 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. It will cool to minus 40 degrees if you want to go down that far. Of course, I always run every new camera through the Bintel online calculator or alternative calculators. Um, that will show you if the sampling rate will match nicely with your particular optical setup and reducers and whatever else you have. 
and you can see how that works if you switch this camera around between different telescopes as well. There is a coating over the surface of the sensor or the sensor glass that won't give that weird reflection that you get on some other cameras. I know with the 1600 ZWO, there is a very characteristic reflection that you get on bright stars. And you see these square reflections on Almatac, for example. The extender has a purpose. If you accidentally get your camera caught while it's slewing around and it's too tight, it'll just unplug. And on the other end, it has this great little thread so you can screw the power on and know that it won't rip your camera out because on the other end, it's just gonna pull right out. That's always a good sign. Gold plated USBs. Do you want to watch me install some drivers? No! Please no! No! Yeah, didn't think so. If it's an ASCOM driver, you'll find that it'll have some sort of control panel where you can set the gain and offset, binning, USB traffic, and stuff like that. Different cameras will have different options here. Um, but once you get the screen, that means it's all connected and you should be able to take your first light. <laughs> Now that the camera's connected, the first thing I'm checking is that it's actually cooling properly and it does appear to be cooling down uh, at, the, at the rate you'd expect. Well, it's 24 hours later and after a huge series of technical problems I won't go into that had nothing to do with the camera and everything to do with the computer, I have a new computer. Okay, so here we are integrating the last few seconds and a 90 second exposure. Let's watch it go. Downloading. And boom, started the next one. That used to be a minute long wait for me. So this is game changing. This basically doubles the amount of data I can get in a night. Now this is interesting. See here is the QHY12. Um, and you can see that the color is just a huge gradient um, and obviously we have this amp glow in the corners here. Uh, now that is true amp glow. So this is my old CCD and this is the one I've just bench tested, the QHY24-7. Now you can see here it doesn't have the CCD amp glow because there is no such thing as amp glow on a CMOS sensor but it does have a thermal signature and I believe this is thermally related and I can see them in these two hot spots on each side of the chip and one little bit here which may be some sort of component uh, off the side there but still super interesting to know and to realize uh, all of this stuff gets subtracted this is my dark master now uh, for this particular exposure length and temperature which was minus 15 degrees uh, but this is great stuff to know before you then go in and start using the camera. In PixInsight, this noise analysis tool lets you do a actual objective noise analysis. Now we can see here the R, G and B channels. This is for the new camera, the, uh, the 24-7C. And this is my QHY12. This is the QHY12 chip. Look at the soldering. Uh, yep, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I can sort of see pixels there. Look at that. Amazing. It just makes you realize that cameras are basically nanotechnology. Y24 7C. It's a little too much camera for the RAS 8. At least the adapters aren't set up for it with that thread size. So thankfully I've got another RASA.